Okay, is my screen is still? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, okay. Okay, next we'll moving on to module five. <clears throat> And it is basically on one concept that is known as ERP. So what is basically ERP? ERP, the full form is nothing but Enterprise Resource Planning. Enterprise Resource Planning. So basically it is a resource planning. Planning methods inventory planning uh, the planning operations done during designing the production process etc so <clears throat> the planning that covers the whole the whole industry is as enterprise uh, resource planning so we are planning the resources used in the industry the resources can be anything human resources raw materials, work in process products, finished goods, inventory, such and all everything, equipment, machines, deciding, the all the resources that we are using in the industry are being planned to what, to what they have to do. So why it is called enterprise resource planning? So the term meaning of an enterprise is nothing but it is the commercial uh, in a commercial world we are using it to describe a project or venture undertaken for gain. A project or venture undertaken for gain. So the main objective of an industry is always to produce profit profit is the ultimate aim for a business operation or an industry's industrial operation to be carried out and for that purpose how to increase the amount of gain that we have open, obtained or the, how to improve the profit that we have to obtain that is how and where we require planning for so we are planning ahead or we have studied already about the lean manufacturing method, the agile manufacturing method. Also has to obtain the maximum amount of profit, right? So in the same way, in an enterprise, an enterprise is known as a project or uh, a venture, venture in the sense, uh, sense of discovering something or developing something, okay? for gain we have to obtain profit so an industry itself is an enterprise <clears throat> an industry itself is an enterprise and each and every resources in it if you are planning for a resource such as human resource maybe the work hour of a human the leisure time they get the time for break etc okay these are human resources coming under human resources if you are planning the, a schedule for them then it is called that enterprise resource is called human resource plan okay it is known as human resource planning so here the enterprise is nothing but the humans involved in the particular operation so we are planning how they will uh, run the production process and ultimately by that method will be the most amount of product which will sufficiently or indirectly promote to the growth of gain or profit. So that is what is coming under resource planning and basically enterprise resource planning. So enterprise can be anything from it may uh, relate from human to the whole industry itself. Okay, so usually by extension, it refers to business entity carrying out the enterprise and is thus synonymous with undertaking company 
or firm can be either an undertaking company or a firm so it is basically an enterprise uh, an industry is always always an enterprise so we are always producing and we are planning each and every steps that has to be done so as to incur more profit so that is the <coughs> basic term enterprise means so what is basically enterprise resource planning so how do we uh, involve the resource planning here so you can see that as a definition it is said that it is a set of integrated business applications or module which carry out common business functions such as general ledger accounting or order management so it's a set of integrated business applications okay um, business application in the sense there there are maybe softwares or a, any such apps and these are all utilized for planning procedure. So business application, under business applications or various structures in business are present or various categories of business are present. And under all these resources or uh, all these categories, we are planning the resources by means of a software, application, etc. Okay. So, uh, one example is IT softwares that integrate business activities across an ent enterprise. So we are using IT softwares that are integrated in business activities. So in business activities, we are integrating that software and it is uh, sent across all the enterprise. So what you are doing here is nothing but you are creating a planning method using a software. In maybe in the design department, we are using one type in software. Another one, another department, maybe is the production field, we are using another type. Inventory side, we are using another type of software. So these are all different types of software. But in an enterprise resource planning or a business enterprise, all these softwares are different, but there will be a common area or a common link wherein all these resource planning all all these softwares can be accessed by each individual of various departments so that is what is being done we have a common system imagine we are having a common system which is paired with all other systems across the industry that is what is happening in enterprise resource planning so we have a planning software at each of the department and it is connected by a common software or a common computer or common system wherein each individual of that particular department or any department can access the data or the planning methods or whatever uh, data we require from that software at this particular common enterprise. So that is the advantage of using enterprise resource planning. So we'll get all the data required for that planning operation. So basically, this is done by certain individuals that are um, basically an industrial engineer and all. And they determine how the workflow should go or they determine how the work has to be divided or they determine how the continuous how to ensure the continuous flow of work so an industrial engineer must get a data from each and every department across the industry and to get that these type of softwares used for planning is connected to a single system or a single hardware etc wherein this respective in the industrial engineer can obtain the data and make necessary changes for improving the current planning system. So that is how enterprise resource planning helps. So it is a resource planning method that is uh, used by companies to manage and integrate the important parts of their design. So we are integrating and managing the important parts of their businesses. So that is what is being done in uh, ERP. 
Many ERP software applications are important to companies because they help them implement a resource planning by integrating all the process need to run their country, companies with a single system. <coughs> so here itself it is mentioned. So all the processes are in integrated. All are integrated into a single system. System. So from a single system, we are ensuring that all the other uh, planning methods are all the other resource planning are implemented across the uh, industry. So various software applications are provided uh, for connecting with a single system. An ERP software system can also integrate planning these are all the operations that can be integrated in that first one is planning then comes purchasing inventory so purchasing inventory in the terms of raw materials components work in process products uh, finished products etc these are all coming under purchasing inventory then sales sales is coming under the uh, transportation and the sales of the product to the consumer from the market etc then marketing, marketing in the sense of advertisement, uh, providing to the market, etc. Finance, wherein we are ga uh, weighing the gain that we are obtaining or the loss we are incurred. Then human resources, human resources are the human personals that are involved in all the activities, basically from production, designing, uh, transportation, inventory control, all the personals. These all are controlled using an ERP software system. Then some of the key points of ERP are ERP software can integrate all the process needed to run a company. So it is basically a software and that software controls all the processes that need to run a company. <coughs> Next, ERP solutions have evolved over the years and many are now typically web-based applications that users can access remotely. Uh, conventionally before uh, the evolution of web-based applications, before uh, it was done all in hand. So we have documents, files, etc. and uh, each personnel for, from the uh, industrial engineer uh, side will be all the procedures etc so it was all work and it was very uh, a tedious work to improve the systems so nowadays web-based applications help easier access and easier uh, planning methods to be implemented in various operations then some benefits of erp include include the free flow of communication between business areas so i have already told you everyone is accessible to the data that using with an erp software so that is how the free free flow of communication is ensured in various business areas then a single source of information and an accurate real-time data reporting is also done so all the information and a real-time data. Real-time data is nothing but the data that we are occurring at each and every time at an instant. Okay, so if it is, if you are looking at the time, suppose if it's uh, one o'clock, and if you want the data regarding one o'clock, we are obtaining it based on that data obtained at that particular time. And this uh, data can be accessed by each and every uh, individual. So such an operation uh, comes under ERP, then an ERP system can be ineffective if a company doesn't implement it carefully. So, <coughs> uh, if you are not implementing it carefully um, and the data are not being entered as correctly as possible, then there will be certain losses. Okay. Some of the key points. Why do we require ERP and how it has evolved? So during 1960s, first a system was implemented. Okay, so 
provision so they have looked upon uh, the inventory and the that during the 1960s they saw that inventory was being filled up so inventory contains a many number of products raw materials work in process finished goods packaged goods uh, delivery delivered products etc okay. this is all coming under inventory so they looked upon and found that the inventory was always at a surplus condition and to improve such a system they introduced various methods such as lean manufacturing just in time uh, manufacturing etc were introduced so as to control the inventory always surplus inventory meant wastage of the uh, product and thereby incurring loss so one of the first method uh, to uh, reduce the loss incurred in a company was to control the inventory so that was the first so controlling the inventory if the inventory is kept at a minimum and uh, according to the demand then always the profit incurred will be or loss incurred will be much lower so that is the first step towards uh, controlling okay so first inventory was controlled then during the 1970s another method was also implemented along with inventory control wherein material requirement planning was done mrp material requirement planning so material requirement planning involves uh, components that we are required to uh, by subcontracting and also the raw materials that we have been as obtaining so why do we have to have a material requirement planning so during the 1970s basically all the major running uh, raw materials such as coal uh, uh, fuel uh, then gold platinum etc okay such ores such uh, resources were becoming scarce due to the industrial revolution that took place before these uh, times that is before 1960s and all raw materials were abundant right so people exhausted all that uh, resources on evolving technology due to war etc okay and the resources they always thought the resources will be abundant and will be always obtained so during the 1970s alone the resources became scarce so due to that we only uh, took materials that we require and on the basis of uh, running in the future generation so we have to run if you are running the company for a long period you will incur more profit so for that long run period they planned ahead so that the material can be planned or uh, used according to the need only so for that uh, implemented wherein we are reducing the waste so waste in the sense of materials raw materials was first introduced and in that uh, we were reducing the raw materials or according to the demand only the raw materials were pro procured and used okay so that comes under material requirement so sub system of that is material management and accounting system so under accounting system it looked upon uh, the way areas in which how reducing raw materials increases or how it reduces the loss incurred so that is one of the method in which uh, they eliminated the waste uh, produced from the raw materials and also during the operation so mms was the reason for the improvement in profit due to raw material planning next comes manufacturing resource planning in the 1980s so they were looking upon manufacturing resources planning so normally before uh, two types of resources were chosen one is the inventory the other was the raw materials next comes manufacturing resources planning so under a manufacturing industry or a manufacturing plant what all resources were there so basically it is written here shop floor and distribution management 
shop floor in the sense of workstation, equipment, etc. Distribution management includes human personnel, automated systems, etc. So these resources were also planned. So planning these resources improved again the profit used. So uh, under this planning, we are uh, fixing the time of work of an individual or a uh, individual worker. Then the overtime they are they created the uh, scheduled uh, rest periods they were given, uh, etc. Okay, and the salary uh, or the uh, fund for uh, their uh, salary etc were calculated and this all comes under manufacturing resource planning then during the mid 1990s these all control so it involves inventory control material requirement planning manufacturing resources planning these were all collaborated into enterprise resourcing resource planning so the, all these activities were then planned from the smallest point of designing to finish production the supply of market were mapped or planned and such a thing was termed as enterprise resource planning so this is the evolution of erp now next we'll look at some of the components of erp so what are the basic components of erp Basically, there are six types of components. First one is customer then business intelligence, <coughs> supply chain management, inventory management, and finally, financial management. These are the core components of enterprise resource planning. So, these are all basic uh, types of resources and various types of resources are used and we'll look at each of them in detail the first one is uh, human resources so human resources uh, in, involved in managing your employees okay managing your employees and that is where the basic human personals were there Without them, you don't have a company. The HR ERP, the human resource ERP module in your software solution should be able to handle employee management tasks such as onboarding, offboarding, timekeeping, and benefits to administration. So these are what it is looking upon or the ERP module or the ERP software under human resources look at the onboarding and offboarding. That is the time of entry and the time of exit. So the duty time is basically onboarding and offboarding and the time keeping time keeping in the sense at uh, what all time he is working and the leisure time he is taking etc of each employee is studied and the benefits how this benefits the admin uh, administration so these all comes under human resources so when you are going as a freshman to a company and all first you are sending your cv or your uh, curriculum vitae to the human resource department or the HR department and they basically uh, look into your profile and look at the qualifications you have and what all skills you have and based on the requirement of the company they will be handling uh, your entry into the con company that is basically they will be handling the interview of uh, each and every personnel into the company so and also they will monitor the level of work they are be doing or the level of work the people in the uh, particular enterprise is doing so these are all managed by the hr department okay it is similarly used in that enterprise itself as in the case of every enterprise an hr department will be present and they are responsible for managing the employees now However, the most important feature to look for in an ERP component is payroll software. Payroll software is nothing but the salary incurred for each and every employee. That is what is coming under payroll software. So it is an important fact, uh, component. And 
manually submitting payroll and issuing direct deposits is incredibly time consuming and isn't cost effective so uh, in under normal conditions uh, manually submitting the payroll that is if you have multiple personals and you are submitting the salary of each and every individual uh, in by hand itself it is a time consuming there will be many uh, personals and you have to call each and every one of them and you have to give them in hand so that is a very hard procedure and instead of that you are using the help of software software in the sense you can nowadays see at the auto debit system right sorry auto credit system wherein uh, your salary to your account will be credited easily by the respective company on basis of uh, account transfer in the online mode okay so during the uh, earlier times we were always implementing submitting the payroll by hand and this tedious work when there were more number of people and to ensure that does not happen or to lessen the time for using online transaction methods and this automated payments uh, automated payments helps in reducing the time lost due to payroll submission okay hand payroll submission time is reduced due to online methods so this all comes under um, then one of the main benefits of an erp solution is that many of your day-to-day -day businesses process can be automated in an effort to reduce human error and spend time on monotonous tasks such as data entry <coughs> So each and every day-to-day -day business processes. So I have already told you, we are monitoring or the HR department monitor every processes that you do from the start of the work to the end of your uh, period of work, maybe eight hours of work or 10 hours of work. And during each time, they are mapping what all work you are being done by means of maybe data suffered through files or uh, feedbacks or even through entry uh, on basis of logging uh, into a system etc so these are all done automated uh, these days to reduce the effort or human error that can occur human error in the sense uh, humans make many errors right so many number of employees and you are not numbering every one of their faces or every one of their names and change in employees are also uh, problems and this all increases human errors so there will be a mistake of count or a mistake of uh, the value obtained etc these all uh, uh, incorrect or these all errors can be eliminated when using a software and such a software is being implemented in HR department for human resource planning then next is customer relation management so first was human resource next is customer relation. so we always know that a positive customer relation always ensure uh, keeping the demand alive and also uh, getting the objectives for the product to be designed so we are designing always the products for satisfying the customer whoever it may be so that is the main function of uh, the industry so if you can produce a product that can satisfy a customer that much profit you can incur that is the main concept or the slogan for uh, an industry to work so under customer relation management managing your customers and leads is another important fact of your business without them your business can't survive let alone grow so that is the main point then the customer relation management component stores and allows you to track generated customer and lead data so we are tracking generated customer so what type of customer is here or what are we <coughs> or uh, what are we uh, performance the customer uh, lead data okay this data can then have 
this can, data can help with the development of insights that could provide uh, or improve sales and marketing processes so it can develop in, uh, sales and marketing processes so depending upon the customer relation or the depending upon the customer feedback uh, we can develop the product right you can develop it uh, into the particular shape or into that particular form so that we could improve sales and marketing processes so uh, by uh, improving uh, the sales and the marketing processes will incur more profits right so if you are getting more sales for a product we are getting more uh, profit uh, during uh, that demand and uh, for better marketing processes we will be including advertisements or we'll be include including various other gimmicks in the products so that it can attract the customer into providing us the customer demand that we require so these are all coming under customer relation management then one of the main uses for customer uh, relation management is tracking customer buying habits so we are always exploiting the customer into buying the products so that we can incur the products right so for that we have to track the customer buying habits how and why they buy it and what uh, period do they buy it so some products such as uh, daily used to products like soaps brushes toothpaste etc are uh, buyed often right it will be finished uh, very fast and they have to be buyed often so that is one of the habit and um, materials that are uh, bought rarely so you can see cooking utensils and uh, uh, knives etc okay these are bought after a certain period of time maybe a long period of time right so we are first studying that buying habit so some products we always notice that they are being bought often and that uh, such products uh, we will be noting down and other one will be bought a little more after a certain period of time maybe a long time itself and that also we are tracking and depending upon that we are improving how to obtain more sales or how to market uh, the particular product so that it can be bought very often so these are all done under customer relation management and with this data available you are able to which product you may want to up upsell and the best times to do it we have already seen uh, uh, various uh, sale periods in uh, online purchasing itself right in flipkart and amazon you can see sales done in various times so uh, one of the main reasons for that sales or one of the main reasons why they employ this online purchasing method is that you can always see the mrp of the set product will be always lower than that of what we obtain in the shops okay that is one of the method in which they ensure or flipkart or amazon ensures that the people buy the product so the cost is always less and during the sale period maybe a festival sale or maybe a, uh, you know about the big billion sale and all right and during that time the cost is reduced to so low so as to uh, promote more purchase so what they are doing is that the products may be some old so there will be some inventory stocks present and i have already told you there will be a minimum inventory always present inside the industry and these inventory once kept for a particular long period of time will always incur lower prices right it will be incurring lower prices and but we will not lower the price at that desired aging period but rather at a higher price than that so we are always incurring profit even if you sell it at a lower price than the so what they are ensuring there so we are uh, giving out products that may not be sold because of their period of storage due during a sale we are selling it so that we can uh clean out the inventory and bring in new inventory so that is the function that is being done here okay so that also 
uh, becomes essential under customer relation management next is business intelligence so what is business intelligence so it is short here it is shown here as bi the bi component of erp collects data and performs analysis that can provide actionable insights about business processes so various business strategies are followed by various industries across the world so each and every planning methods that we obtain in nowadays or which we have started is once implemented by an industry okay one industry starts uh, such a process as one uh, as another industry another method so we will look at which industry is implementing or getting more profits okay Using the partnership that we have already mentioned, the corporate partnership during the corporate partnership, we are obtaining such planning methods. Okay, we are obtaining that planning methods, and if it is found out to be more optimized or more, if it can incur more profit, then that set of uh, process is being then implemented into the company. Okay. so that is what is coming under business intelligence so there is a sharing of knowledge or the business processes are obtained and collected as in terms of data and is integrated into our processes or our procedures that are being done in the industry and once that is incorporated in that a small level of that change will always incur more profit so that is what is the important of business intelligence so it not may not be one industry itself no numerous number of industries uh, various procedures are studied and then it is being implemented okay as businesses start to rely more heavily on decisions backed by data bi becomes indispensable so nowadays we are using uh, softwares right so Uh, earlier we had to study an industry's growth or an in the a competitive in the industries matter for results but nowadays due to software prediction and forecast we don't need uh, such uh, industrial talks right we don't need such industrial talk rather the software itself predicts if uh, how we have to design the process to obtain more profit okay that is all under this uh, all other comments